Hi everyone, it's Jason from Skinny R&D, and today I've just got a quick project to show you involving a really simple telephone setup. This is a setup that I put together for uh, my class, and I just kind of wanted students to see how simple uh, the normal analog telephone system is. So what we have is a telephone cord, just a regular gray mounting cord, a 9 volt battery that's stuck in line with the cord, and two phones. The way it works is you take both the phones off the hook, and uh, you're able to talk to one person or the other. It's like a small intercom system. So if I talk into this, maybe you can hear me uh, on the speaker, I'm not sure. Uh, but definitely the thing is, uh, the phone fully functions. You still get dial tone. For instance, if I hit a one or a two here, you hear it uh, on the other handset. So everything functions like a normal phone system. It's just really neat to me uh, that that's really all it takes to run this. Normally, uh, central office voltage or voltage running to a normal analog phone would be negative 48 volts, but when you take the phone off hook, the central office drops that voltage, that operating voltage, down to 3 to 9 volts, and that's exactly what we have here is a 9 volt battery. So this is a really cool project to put together for like kids to play with, or if you just want to play with it at home. Um, I've also thought about putting different switches and stuff in line so that it makes it easier to call the other person. The only thing that doesn't work on this is the ringer. For the ringer to work, you need like a 90 volt AC source with a uh, 20 to 30 hertz um, signal running down the line. So what we're going to do now is I'll show you a quick look at the schematic and how this operates. So this is the schematic. It's real simple. Uh, I got the schematic off of Instructables, I believe. I'll leave a link down in the uh, description below. Um, so this is not my original design. Someone else came up with this. I have modified it just ever so slightly though. The one thing I modified uh, was this resistor here. I believe they have uh, on their version um, something like a 300 ohm resistor or whatever. I really don't even know if the resistor matters that much for the way that we're using it in this case. Um, but uh, I had a 470 ohm resistor laying around. I threw it in there. It was way too much. Um, it didn't have enough current to uh, power up the whole system. So I had to take two of those 470 ohm resistors, put them in parallel, and that's why it comes up with a, a resistance of 235 but really anywhere around 200 ohms or so I think you'll be fine even down to 150 ohms I think it'd be fine there is something you have to kind of be mindful of when you use this for one uh, when you use this as an intercom to talk back and forth you kind of have to have both of the phones off hook at the same time if you just take one of the phones off hook uh, you really can't get anything in fact your voice won't transmit you can't hit a dial tone nothing works you have to take both of them off the hook and I'll show you why that is so here's a little bit more of a close-up picture of what's going on we've got uh, our wires going to phone one here our wires going to phone two here one thing that I didn't show you in the previous schematic is what actually is happening uh, in the phone itself so we're gonna pretend like everything past this line is phone one and everything past say this line is uh, phone two so inside of the phone what you have actually is right before the phone itself, uh, you have the ringer, okay? The phone, uh, the guts of the phone isn't exactly connected straight into the line. It's actually the ringer's connected up. There's switches in the phone so that when you pick the phone off hook, those switches close and then provide power for the phone itself. But right before those switches, you have a, a line that comes down, you have a transformer coil, and then you have a capacitor. On the other side of that transformer coil is the ringer. What will normally happen is if uh, this side over here was actually the central office instead of a phone, and the central office sends ring down the line, that ring with its transformer, the AC voltage from that uh, ring that the central office sends would couple across this transformer, hit the bells or the enunciator, ring the phone, and then you have the path back this way. Now the capacitor is here because like I said, there's always negative 48 volts on this line and you would not want your DC power to short itself out across the ringing circuit so they have this capacitor here to block the DC voltage. All right, so that's actually in both sides in our case. So we have a phone here with a ringer and we also have a phone over here with a ringer and then you have to forgive my transformer drawing there. So what happens when you have the hookup like we've done with the battery down here is you have power coming from this battery it comes up and then oh it's blocked by this capacitor so it can't go anywhere right even if you take this phone off hook and close the circuit off so that power flows to this phone well nothing's going to happen so let's say over here let's say i take this phone off hook all right i take it off hook well that bypasses this circuit it sends the uh it sends the current through the phone itself and then out down this way but by the time it gets to the other side, now 
that DC voltage is going to be blocked by that capacitor in line with that ringing circuit. So what happens is, uh, you know, in that case, you, you really have to pick up both instruments. If you pick up both instruments off hook, then the current can flow all the way down to this phone and then have a return path here and go all the way back to the battery and you get your full circuit in that case. So that's kind of the issue here with this little intercom system. It is really cool to play with. I did toy with the idea of doing something like uh, putting in uh, my own ringing system from one phone to another. So for instance, what you could do is you could put in a secondary low voltage battery here and down on this side have an LED here and so put you a switch there so that every time you close this switch it would light this LED up on the far side and then in uh, you know in reverse you could do it as well you could stick a battery here and have an LED over here and do the same sort of thing um, but another thing you could do is you could work this out you'll start to realize there's some problems with that as well so what you'd have to do is put a switch here here and here and just kind of work out a handshaking routine there's kind of a, a signaling protocol you'd have to do which is exactly how a ground start loop trunk kind of works in an analog system it has this handshaking routine so it's it's not without precedence that something like this has kind of been set up before so i'll leave that up to you if you come up with a solution for this that's cool uh, i'd like to present it in a future video if you let me know I, i'd be happy to show that off um, but i just think this is a neat circuit just kind of a fun quick circuit to do and uh, it doesn't take a lot of time so enjoy it and let me know how it goes uh, thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you later bye